Alrighty, in this video we're going to be making a function that honestly Unreal Engine really should have included in their instant static mesh uh, mesh class. So what I'm referring to is dealing with sockets and, you know, certain meshes that you're having to deal with. Or So basically, you know how when you hit play, I've already got it here, let me actually comment this out so it doesn't run, or disconnect the node I mean. So I want to attach a cube onto a certain mesh that I have that is instant. So I have mesh one, or sorry, zero, one, then two. Now I want to attach a cube onto a socket that is on mesh number one. So that would be this middle one right here. Well, unfortunately there's no built-in method to do this. So I ended up making my own in Blueprint real quick and we're gonna end up making a function or Better yet, we're going to be overriding, or sorry, not overriding, making a uh, derived class from the instant static mesh class that will contain this function for us. So that way we can just simply call it, and that's all we have to do. It just handles everything else behind the scenes. Just a, kind of like a nice little life improvement there to really make it simple for us. Uh, the other route is we could just have a function in our actor class that does this every time. Actually, honestly, we may end up just doing that just for the sake of this, but I mean, you'll be able to apply it either way. It's fairly straightforward. So to begin, I'm just going to walk this through in Blueprint. So here in my foundation, I went ahead and added a socket. So I just went over here, hit the plus sign, named it test socket, and I hit the drop down and I just set the preview as a cube so I could see exactly where it's supposed to be positioned. So that way... All I do is I start up a delay just so everything gets added and set up. Then I simply add a static mesh component, which contains the cube. Now, as you can see, it's the relative transform. So it takes in a transform that is relative to the component or the actor that we're working with, which is kind of handy for us. So then all in all, at the end, when we hit play, after one second, as you can see, a cube just spawned right up there. It got attached exactly where we want it. And if I wanted to, I could bump this up, and now we'll put it on the top row. So we'll move it on to index number two. So that'll be on the top one. It's in the same spot. I can move this socket around wherever I want. I'll move it all the way back, and I'll go partway through the mesh. And it's all going to work the same. It gets the correct spot. So how does this work? Well, starting from it, we have to make a relative transform between the socket and the actual world transform of the mesh or sorry not the war transform the instance so the mesh that we want to get so in our case this is two i want to revert that back to one so that's going to be our middle you know our middle mesh from there we can make our own transform now this is pretty much spot on by default with the exception of the z-axis by default the z-axis is just off so for example if I, let me go ahead and set that up and this will be you know, direct from the relative that it made. As you can see, it's not even there. If I go down, it's underneath. So that's obviously a problem. So what we have to do to correct for the z-axis is we can simply take our instance transform and the initial socket transform and add the two z's together. So we just add those two positions together and boom, we now have the correct z-axis which would be right there where our socket is. And because of that, we can simply add whatever the heck we want to it and go from there. So this is going to be kind of what we can use for our snapping. So we're going to be trying to figure out, you know, which component we hit. And from there, which, I guess we could do which socket are we closest to. That can be kind of our, uh, uh, what do you say, our way to figure out, you know, where to place our next building item. So I'm going to actually go ahead and rewrite this in C++ just as a function in our actor just to make life a lot easier. So that way all we have to do is pass in the parameters, you know, which, uh, which instance mesh component do we want, which index do we want, and the socket name that we want to get, and have it handle everything else and return the relative transform for us. So let's begin. So I'm actually going to close some of that down. I was looking through to see if anything added by default. Unfortunately, it doesn't. I, again, I really have no idea why. But I want to go ahead and make this a 
view function. Actually, this one, it probably wouldn't hurt to make it public either. And we want it to return a F transform. And let's give it the name of, let's see, get, uh, get socket, um, get instance socket, I guess is a decent name. And I wanted it to take in a U instance static mesh component. So let's call it instance component. Then the next one I want it to be is the index that we want to get. So really it's just going to be between, you know, zero through whatever. So we can just honestly do a U int eight if we want to pass around small, but because we're working with the blueprint, we're going to do an int 32. Let's call it uh, instanced instance index and then if we look at the remaining parameters that's we just have the socket name so we want a const f name by reference socket name and from there we can go through and do everything that we've done in blueprint so we want to make sure our meshes that are sorry our instance is valid we want to get the transform of the index that we were passing in as well as we want to get the socket and then from there we can make relative using the ukismet math library which has functions built in for us to handle that with and i guess i'll try to zoom in that might make it a little easier for some people to see all right so first off if instance deponent and realistically we can check and make sure the instance index is greater than zero or greater than or equal to zero which i guess it's just for a safety reason so if instance component and instance component let's see we should be able to see if an index exists so if we search for instance is valid instance and that takes in the index so let's do instanced index so that's going to be our check so if our static mesh component is or sorry instance static mesh components valid this is really hard for me to say for some reason and the index that we pass in is a valid one we know we have what we need and we are good to go. And ultimately we could check and see if the socket is valid as well, but you know, it's most likely, it just, we can return something else either way. Okay, so we know we have that information. Now let's get the instance transform and the socket transform. So F transform, let's do instance transform, and that's gonna be equal to instance component Let's see what is it get instance transform and we want the index so that's going to be instance index and then okay so that passes out af transform so we have to do this crap so i'm just going to set it equal an empty transform and that's going to be the second parameter and then the last one is world space is false which we want to leave so because we are we want it to be false anyways Next up, we want to get the socket transform. So instance component, get socket transform. Now it should be the socket name. So socket name, and then the space. So ETS underscore, wait, is it ETS? Let's see. No, it's RTS. RTS underscore component. We want to store that. So F transform, socket transform, and now we can make it relative. So F transform, relative transform equals U kismet math library, All right? And it include it automatically for me, but if you are on Visual Studio or have something that does not automatically do this, you have to scroll up, include kismet, kismet math library, and you are ready to go. Now, I apologize because I know this is a very boring thing, but it is something that is going to be very beneficial for us to have. So, anyways, Ukismet Math Library, make relative transform. And we want to make the socket transform relative to our, I can't, brain's not working, instance transform. So, we, let's get our socket transform. And we want to make that relative to the instance transform. Uh, 
All right, now that we have that, we can move along. And essentially we are good to go with the exception of the actual Z axis. So what we want to do is take or make our own F vector. So F vector, let's do uh, relative location equals relative transform dot get location. We want to modify the Z. So relative location dot Z equals the instance transform dot Z or get location dot Z plus the socket transform dot get location dot Z. And then we want to set that back into relative transform. So relative transform dot set location. We want to set that to relative location. And this is ultimately what we want to return. And I'm being dumb. We're going to return the relative transform. Now, otherwise, we want to return just an empty F transform. Simple enough. So, in theory, we actually could improve this a little bit so that way we're not checking if a transform is uh, zeroed out. We could make this output a relative transform, but I don't actually know how that works with Blueprint. So, uh, let's just give it a try. So, I'm going to close everything down, recompile and relaunch, and see how it goes. Alrighty, let's reopen everything back up. Let's go to our BP building. And I'm just going to simply move this all down. And let's try calling our function. So let's see, we named it get instance socket. Which we really need to change to get instance socket transform. But for now, it's okay, I guess. Uh, the instance component is going to be our foundation instance for testing. Let's just get the first one. We have the socket name, which is going to be our test socket, which I guess we could have assigned as a default so we didn't have to pass it in. So let's do a make literal name, paste it in, and then we hopefully should get our return value out. So let's plug it in and just see. So we hit play, and there we go. So we attach it to the first one, or, let's, or sorry, the second one. So let's attach it to the first. And there we go. Okay, so we now have our function that gets, uh, yeah, everything we need there. So that was a pretty boring one. Uh, I don't know what else to really explain, but as you can see, though, everything's functional. Let's just clean up the naming a bit, and we are at a spot where we can continue. So let's do get instance socket transform. Rename it in the header. And for the socket name, uh, actually, I can't, because I'm doing it by reference, I cannot uh, set it to anything by default. So, never mind on that one. But, yeah, we are pretty much good to go. We have, yeah, we have the component we want. We have, yeah, we, we just have everything we need. So, we're pretty much set. Um, I cannot think of anything else. So, yeah, that's going to be it for this video. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon down in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patrons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord as well, that's linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So, I'll see you in the next video.